to, tonight we are going to talk about the seven signs of a true son and uh, um, as we go through this subject I would like to say this that uh, it's not about um, man exhortation it's about God himself amen so never see it as exhorting man but it is actually just uh, putting things in place the way they are supposed to be amen so seven signs of a true son so we're going to talk about the seven signs of a true son jesus before he left you know he said to his disciples that i no longer call you servants but friends <laughs> yes but friends uh in other words brother okay because secrets cannot be revealed to servants okay i said now you are now my brother okay god who is my father is now your father okay before you were not that's why the old testament if you read the old testament there is nothing like son it is just servants 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 so god in the old testament was dealing with servants not sons but in the new testament god deals with us as sons that's why romans chapter uh, chapter 8 you know the bible says that the earth itself you know awaits the manifestation of son it is groaning for the manifestation of sons so now this thing the kingdom of god is sons is father son now god does not have a wife uh, god does not have a wife there is no mother in heaven like some other sects or or some other cults you know uh, propagate that there is mother god and no no there's no such a thing so there is no mother god okay so now god himself god himself is the source god is everything in him okay god is everything in him praise the lord amen god is everything in him we he is el shaddai the all-sufficient God, praise God, is the double-breasted one. So now when, when, uh, when Jesus was here on earth, he was relating with God as a father. Okay? And uh, at the cross, how many of us remember the cross? When he was at Calvary, you know, and he cried, he did not cry, Father, 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 why have you forsaken me? He said, God, my God, my God my god why have you forsaken me that's how the children or that's how the people in the old testament you used to relate with god as father yahweh they could not even say the word okay yahweh it was quite you know a terrifying uh word even to say it. so they never used to say yahweh okay so the, even writing they would not write they would just write uh y h w something like that they could not just write the full name of god all right so when he cried there father 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 he was identifying himself with a sinful man are we together he was identifying himself with a with a sinful man who had no relationship with god that's why why have you forsaken me god distance 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 himself away from from jesus okay so then later jesus was calling god father i mean father abra father source because he had a relationship with god all right so now you and i we have a father okay we have god father and why do we call god father his source his source and sustainer we came from god hello we all came from god so the moment i say god is my father I'm simply saying abba source and sustainer in other words i receive from god and god sustains me i receive from god and god sustains me i came from god initially god is the one who said let us make man in our image after our likeness so we we all came from from the lord amen so now in in romans paul came and said that god has given us the spirit of sonship by which we cry abba okay so he has given us the spirit of sonship he hasn't given us any other spirit is a spirit of sonship yeah so god has given us the spirit of sonship. sonship god has given us the spirit of sonship so now when we come to jesus he gives us the spirit of sonship and we cry abba father amen we cry abba father when growing up you know the, we were taught that everyone who's older 
who is in the the you know the age bracket with your dad is your father is it true yes is your dad so in our community every neighbor was daddy okay yeah in that time there was no uncle it was just daddy yes daddy daddy so there there was that strong very strong uh sense of fatherhood in those days that's why uh, a neighbor a neighbor can meet you and you are misbehaving can discipline you because you are relating to him as a father and when you go and report when when you report then they beat you for reporting <laughs> yes <laughs> yes for reporting him for beating you okay so it was a very strong uh, environment of fatherhood and that's why somehow they, they we had morals that time yes okay there were some you know good moral standards so we have to establish that again in the body of Christ the fatherhood environment are we together the fatherhood environment um, <clears throat> now if we want to, to to grow spiritually we have to relate first and foremost we have to relate with God as a father as a father relate with God as a father you can never relate with God with as as an uncle now for you and I to relate uh, with God as a father first we have to relate well with our earthly fathers because those are the like they are replicas of the heavenly father so now you know the, you know why we struggle so much to relate with God as a father because we never related so well our fathers did not relate with us so well our earthly fathers for some of us we never got to know our, our earthly fathers hello so it comes it it gets to be very difficult really to to relate with God as a father hello yes even to submit to authority it becomes so strange because the the authority figure wasn't around uh, around us okay so we are, we are going to look at seven signs or marks of a true son <clears throat> of a true son praise the Lord amen now not every person in church is a son so including daughter okay so not every person in church is a son not everyone that comes to church is a son so we have to understand that hello yes not everyone that comes to church is a son okay they are those who are good people who come to church did you know that they are just good people but they are not sons <laughs> yes they're just good people just like in our, com in our society you find good people but it, it doesn't mean they're, they're, they're your children yes so you find good people but doesn't mean they are your sons so even in church we have good people they are good christians but they are not sons yeah they are not sons okay and we, we will see some uh, attributes you know that will qualify one to be a son so a son or daughter okay <clears throat> so you find very nice people in church very good people in church you find very encouraging people in church they will encourage you but doesn't mean they are sons or daughters okay then you find those who are very significant people you know it doesn't mean that they are sons very significant you know they and they are also very dangerous <laughs> very dangerous people hello the now in church you find all these categories you find them whether you like it or not so one day when you become a pastor just know that you will find these people in church nice people yes yes you find them they they'll be good people but they will not be your sons or your daughters no they will not be okay yes no matter what you do they can't just become yeah so you have to make peace yes you have to make peace they cannot just they they can they can't they they cannot just do that you know so because of the following reasons okay 
So seven sons of sons and daughters, number one. A son or a daughter resembles his father. You know them. A son resembles his father. A daughter resembles his father. John 14 verse, verse 9. John 14 verse 9. John 14 verse 9 says, Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? So if you see the Son, you have seen the Father. If you have seen the Father, you have seen the Son. They resemble. Okay? The, even in church, it is like that. It is like that. Okay? The... <clears throat> so now, when you see a son, or you see a daughter, the son says, oh, you, you are, your father should be, okay. Because of some, even if they, they some of the features are not so prominent, but as you get to interact, you see some mannerisms, okay. You know, yes, some characteristics that will actually point to the father, okay. Yes, because he is a father. All right. Um, so, daughters and sons, they resemble the father. And this, this, this one is true also in the spirit. The, um, if you sit under someone and you, you cannot take the nature, then that connection is not there. Yes. Yeah, the, um, that connection is not there. <clears throat> you know, I like worship. You know why I like worship? I sat under Pastor Mutong. The man loves worship. Yes, I sat, I sat under him. So I, that thing rubbed on me. Okay? So I went somewhere and... Uh, Person asked me, said if I knew Pastor Mutonga, I said yes. I said, yeah, worship came down. Now, if you cannot, like, if you cannot become, then you are not. Like, it, um, I want, at one time I sat under Ben Hin from a distance. I was just following him passionately. I started sounding like him. Yes. I started sounding, there's a time I started following Creflo Dollar passionately. I started start sounding like him. Okay, so you cannot sit under someone and not start sounding. I'm, I'm not saying you start, you start imitating. It comes out natural. Yeah. You, you, get, you connect. Yes. You connect. Okay. The, <clears throat> now, what makes people not to do that? They do not appreciate, they do not respect. The, the anointing that you, you don't respect can never rub, can never rest on you. It's just the way it works. The anointing that you don't respect can never rub on you, can never rest on you. So, the, you know what anointing is? Anointing is just a rub. To rub. Yeah. So anything, and an, an anointing that you can never, you, that you do not respect can never rub on you. And can, you, can never, you can never smell, you can never carry the smell. Of the anointing. Okay, so the <clears throat> if you hang around somebody, even with friends, you do know that you start talking like your friend. If especially if you adore that friend, hello, yeah. yes, you start speaking like like your friend. You start walking like your friend. You start sagging if if your friend sags. Okay. If a, if, if a friend is a fool, you become a fool. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You can never be wiser than the people you hang around. Yes. So you start behaving the same way. That's why you cannot hang around drunkards and never drink. You definitely start drinking. Because you become. Okay. So you will partake. Definitely. You will partake. And you become. Okay, so sons and daughters resemble their father. You know why Jesus, when Jesus was your nest and when he left, you know, the Christians were not called Christians initially. They were called saints, not Christians. 
people started calling them Christians, meaning these people are like Christ, Christ like. They are behaving like that person who was crucified. Yes, you know, yes, because they lived, they walked, they, you know, they were with Jesus. So they began to do everything like Jesus. Are we together? All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's so important to understand that. The, you know, the, in the church, of course, we have a head of be original, which is true. Be you. But, listen, there are things that will actually come on you because of your association. Yeah. <clears throat> Either positive or negative. Hello? So you can never run away from that. You can never avoid it. Okay? So if your friends are thieves, there will be an impartation that will come on your life. Okay? That's why if your, your friends are godly, there will be an impartation of godliness on your life. Yeah. Yeah. So there will be an impartation. Are we together? Okay. So now, if you are in a certain environment, just know that there will be an impartation on your life. That's why it will be a sheer waste of time, okay, to be in a place where you despise. Yeah. There's a lady that uh, really was speaking to me a lot, Auntie Lady. So she spoke to me and said, Faith, never be presumptuous. She said, when you come in the presence of God, never be presumptuous. The presence of God can neither bless you or curse you. Oh, I said, oh. so I said, but how? I said, yeah, the way you treat the presence of God. Yes. Are we together? Yeah. So now, um, we have to understand that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Can you say amen? amen? So now, every father, you know, uh, every child carries a father's DNA. If you stay under a certain teaching, you stay under, uh, under a, a certain te teaching. Say, for example, they, 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 they teach that there is Mother God. It will take a lot of transformation because there is a DNA that has been. You, you remember we, we talked about decoding? Yes. The Word of God. The Word is a code. Okay. Yeah. In fact, words are codes. Are we together? Yes. So now, when the more we are listening, we have been coded. Something is coded in our system. All right. Now, when we talk about, you know, the mind transformation, renewal and stuff, we, we are just talking about decoding. We, we taking out what has been placed there and put in the, the, new, the, the new software, the word of God. Okay, so now when we are under a certain teaching, you know, an erroneous teaching, it will be a lot of work because of the DNA. Yes. Do you know deception? You know why, why deception is so powerful? D. Decept. Okay. Decept. Sept. Is a concept. It's a you know the, the a concept that has been D. Okay, so it's actually the truth, but just add a code, a corrupted code. Are we together? A truth, add a corrupted code. You know, and then it is someone believes that. Oh, my. That's why somebody can be said, this is cyanide. Let us drink, we go to heaven. Person will drink this and die. Okay? That's what decept can do. Okay, now, that's the DNA. That's how powerful, you know, just to be under is. So now, you can wonder why that person cannot open his eyes and see. You are wondering. That person can't see. No, no, no. It's so difficult. Are we together? Yes, because the person is under. All right. So that's why we should know where we are under. 
Never be deceived and say, no, it doesn't matter where I am. No, no, no. It matters a lot. It matters a lot. It matters a lot, man. Oh, it's huge. Where one is. Very huge. Number two, a son or a daughter is forever. John 8, verse 35. John 8, 35. Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. The sons and daughters, they don't live. Sons and daughters don't live. Hello? Sons and daughters don't live. They, they stay. No matter what happens, they stay. The... <clears throat> Just natural sons and daughters, they don't leave their parents and go and join the neighbors. Hello. Amen. Yes. We, we specialize in that. No, the Lord has led me. Hello. Are we together? Amen. So sons and daughters don't leave. Number three, sons and daughters believe in their fathers and trust them everything. So they believe the one of the moments I've treasured in my life is to to play with Creflo when he was small. The amount of trust the boy had. Amazing. Even today. Yeah. The amount of trust he had when we would play play very dangerously. Yeah, we would play where well, may think someone here may end up with a broken leg. Yeah, so now I had to do everything to secure, to protect, to protect him from uh, fracturing his leg or arm. Yes, and he had just an amazing trust. Yes, so um, sons believe in their fathers and trust them. Second Chronicles 20, 20. It's there. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe in the what? The Lord. So shall you be established. Believe his prophets. So shall ye prosper. Very powerful. Okay. Very powerful. The... You know what provokes miracles? Because uh, God works with man. That's an interesting thing. God works with man. I don't know why God should ask people to preach. Why shouldn't he just do it himself? Why should God, you know, go and, you know, command us to go and heal the sick when he can do it himself? Because he needs a vessel. To work through. Are we together? Okay. So now, listen. God establishes us, believing God. God prospers us, believing in his prophets, whom he has sent. Listen. The, why didn't God deliver the children of Israel by himself? But he had to go and look for Moses. Okay. He found Moses and sent him back. Instead of himself going there and deliver them out. Now, listen. Miracles happen when, when we believe a man whom God has sent. Okay, that, that's, that's, that's very simple. We believe him. We believe in the man God has sent. Now, we are not actually saying, I, I don't believe in God. No, no. I believe that God has sent this one. Did you hear what I said? Yes. I believe that God has sent this person. Okay? I believe God has sent this person. All right. Now, listen to me. Now, if I believe God has sent this person, you know what will provoke the miracles? Do you know what provokes miracles or the vehicle of, of miracles? Words. Words. <clears throat> A centurion came to Jesus and said, Master, my servant is sick, but I'm not really a worthy person for you to come. 
Just say a word. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just say a word. Because I understand authority, I am also a man under authority. I call this one, come and he comes. I say, I say to this one, go and he goes. I am a man under authority. authority. And I believe you are a man under authority. So if you speak a word of healing, my servant shall be healed. Okay. So now if you believe that this man is under authority, what you will say shall come to pass it shall be Hallelujah. yes that's how it goes okay you believe that this man is under authority what he will say it shall come to pass that's why listen to me that's why you know the things that are said it's not because their voice is speaking no <laughs> Okay, not because a voice is speaking. So, uh, uh, someone can speak a word, and if you believe it, it can happen. Yes, can be so. Okay, so you believe, you believe. Very important. All right, believe. Number four. 